just a pep rally. We're getting we're getting prepared to, to do the dirty work. We're getting prepared to have these conversations. And I think that this has been a great a great spark and it's created great energy. And I and my heart is full every time I'm there. You know, um, to have Big G come out in, in, in the middle of four thousand people. If you know anything about the history of Go Go, like that's very. That's a very risky situation for him to put himself in, and that says a lot. So I want to continue to move forward with these rallies, and we will. Um, I want us to continue to spread the word. It's, it's, it's no other better form of promotion. Word of mouth is the best form of promotion. So make sure that we're spreading the word. We'll keep telling to build the energy. And like I said, we continue to push the message of peace and unity so that we can move forward. That's basically why I'm here. Super music producer. Hey, how, how you doing, everybody? My name is John P. Um, thanks, John, for having me and putting this event together. Uh, make sure that you're right around. I was a real, it was real. Um, yeah, my, my, you know, I was called on, you know, to the new DC movement um, from Donald Campbell, uh, the owner of the Metro store down on the seventh in Florida, and uh, you know, because he was facing, you know. Uh, you know, some problems when it comes to gentrification and being, you know, you know, uh, businesses being attacked. Um, in general, just black owned businesses just being attacked, or black communities or black representation being attacked, a certain demographic. And, you know, his store, you know, has been a prominent store for 25 years. They've been playing government music on the corner for a very, very, very long time. And, um, you know, uh, the new residents has come in and they complain to one another. So, you know, me and myself, Tony Lewis Jr., um, uh, Ronald Burton, and Kamal Freeman came along to, uh, to, to help them out the situation, to combat the situation with gentrification. But, you know, we're, you know now we're here, we're moving forward. Kamal put together some great rallies, you know, to, uh, to bring spotlight to the situation. Y'all has organized um, the Mochella events behind it, which have been extraordinary, it's been great. Um, very instrumental into the movement and trying to really get down to, you know, follow up on both of their points when it comes down to, like, you know, not just gentrification, but how the gentrification, the root of it. We need to get to the root of it in, in, in order to combat the situation because there's a lot of internal things that us as, as black folks, we need to address, but also not just black folks, people that come from lower income situations because we all share the same stories, we all share the same borders that come from lower income situations. So I think it's a, it's a lot of conversation and just black, it's about just the system in general. So, you know, um, moving forward, you know, we you know, uh, don't you see DC in any time moving along with, you know, along with go go and the Mochella movements and, and the lines that come put together. I think, you know, um, me as well, I'm a producer and using my strengths as far as uh, taking the Algogo sound here and creating um, the, 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 uh, the baseline as far as producing songs and producing content to keep the riders moving and to keep creating the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, uh, the atmosphere to have those conversations. That's why I'm going to play my part. You know, we got so, you know, uh, a lot of good things coming forward. We got a song coming with all us that's coming real soon to keep this thing going. And, you know, that's why I just play my part. I'm going to keep it short because I know they gave great explanations. They can't decide on So that's why I'm going to Yes, sir. All right. Well, we're going to come back for closing comments. I'm going to try to get your thoughts together because we're about to open the, um, the mic up for you guys. But in our uh, quest for community um, control, community power, uh, we have to understand uh, that we have first been um, um, sold a false narrative. The, the narrative that we've been given is that your choices are simply paper or plastic. And that is a false narrative. You do not have to choose a plastic bag or a paper bag. You can have your own bag, a recyclable bag, and bring that joint back over and over again. And we're here to try to figure out what we're going to put in that bag. So make sure that you know that Papa got a brand new bag. Okay? <laughs> That's what we're doing here today. So get your thoughts together. I haven't seen nobody write anything on them posters yet, so uh, obviously we haven't said anything that you, uh, if you feel that strongly about. So what I'm going to do is let me give you um, my, because uh, we obviously I've been working on this for uh, quite some time. How many of y'all never heard of React Radio? Raise your hand if you never heard of React Radio. All right, you, we act radio. Do something. Okay? All right, we've been working for you, but we need you to participate. Okay? Um, you got to make sure that you support those who are um, supporting you. Again, Small Businesses um, is, and that, matter of fact, it's Small Business Week. Small Business Week, okay? 
All right, let me find um, my list of here as I'm going through. Because we have to create our own plan. Now, do you think, I said the Douglas Community Land Trust. How many of y'all raise your hand if you've never heard of a, a land trust, community land trust? Raise your hand if you've never heard of a community land trust. It was founded by Alec King. That was Marlon King's um, um, cousin. Because back when they were doing voter registration and, and black people was getting kicked off the plantation for uh, daring to vote, um, they had to make sure that these people had places to stay. And they created community land trust, which is basically a development deal for the community that is impervious to market prices. You know, market prices is kind of like the, the market terrorizes people. Right? Because your housing should be based upon income, not based upon what you can prices. Market price says, I'm going to charge you as much as I possibly can for this, as opposed to you shouldn't be spending more than 30% of your income in housing. They know how many people are making $20,000, $40,000, $80,000, $100,000. They know how many of those people are here. Do we have adequate number of housing based upon 30% of their income for those people? They do not, because they're displacing people. This is capitalism. So here, hold on, baby. We, gonna, we, we got two microphones that we're going to bring to you. All right. So here are my submission for a retention plan for long-time residents and small businesses in this city. Okay. Here we go. Number one, we need a unique AMI for DC and a unique AMI for East of the River. What is AMI? The area median income that they claim determines what is affordable and not affordable in Washington, D.C. is based upon the area. That means they factor in the richest counties in the country, Fairfax, Montgomery, to decide what's affordable inside D.C. The, uh, the last I heard that the median income in Washington, D.C. was well over $108,000. Raise your hand, you make over $108,000. All right. You can't afford affordable housing in Washington, D.C. All right? We need to have an AMI indigenous to this city, and then East of the River needs to have an AMI indigenous to that area because that's the neglected part of the city. All right? That's one. Two, a zoning map amendment. Zoning maps, zoning is what makes things possible. He's got to build four stories above you. Uh, you know, he can, he can have a business here, or he can't have a business here. We need to be involved with that, okay? Three, property tax cuts. We talked about this with Sankova Bookstore. How property tax is the modern version of redlining, okay? These are things that we should be fighting for. Number four, an equitable school funding. You know that schools, um, Malcolm X says that when you live in a poor area, you go to a poor school. When you go to a poor school, you get a poor education. You get a poor education, you get a poor paying job. You get a poor paying job, then neighbors will live in a poor neighborhood. It's a very vicious cycle. We have to detach property taxes from determining school funding. All schools should be equitably funded. We've just been joined by um, 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 Ron Moulton, uh, CP Time, but very glad he did. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> we have to separate that. Jack Evans. Jack Evans, when he was sworn in last time, said that every school should have equitable funding. Every child should have the same resources, the same opportunities, and that we have enough resources for everybody. And he went on to say that those who was here in the bad times should stay here in the good times. Unfortunately, nothing has been done to address that and make it a reality. Number five, fully funded community land trusts. We talk about community land trusts, but they're not funded. They haven't given us land. We don't have any assets. We don't have anything to work with. They have gotten rid of so much of this public housing, all that can be turned over to community land trust to ensure that all these things we're talking about are brought to fruition, but we got to make it happen. Number six, um, fund community banks. You need to take your money out of banks, especially Bank of America, especially Wells Fargo, who are guilty of crimes against um, 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 citizens of this country. If you don't know that, look that up. All right, we need community banks that fund us, okay, and these programs. And uh, six, I mean seven, seven, we need rent control. One of the things that uh, Mary Barry had was rent control, which made him a target. If you look at the timeline, as soon as they got Barry out of the picture, gentrification exploded. All right? And then eight, new public housing models, border segregation. You don't take all the poor people and put them in one area. Okay? We have to have mixed income, but room for everybody. All right, we used to have, when we were segregated, black people used to have to live in the same area. 
the pimp would live right next door to the doctor. So she had a more accurate view of reality. And said, it's just all pimps <laughs> and all doctors. You know? Okay? And then uh, number eight, uh, number nine, we need mutual uh, uh, housing associations. I don't have time to go into detail to everything. This is why we, we have an overview and I got to uh, hear from you guys. Uh, so I hope you're writing some of this stuff down. And 10, and it's documented, we're live streaming on We Act Radio. And number 10, guarantee housing for all, uh, for all in this city at 30% of their income. And one of the things that they don't want to tell you is that white people are economically oppressed in this city too. Because all these white people ain't making over, nobody raised their hand, it's making over $108,000 in here. So there's white people in this room that can't afford affordable housing in Washington, D.C. Okay? So finally, let me say this. I'm giving it to uh, Mr. Moe that just joined us, but then we want everyone to get to have a comment and get to these microphones. But as soon as we're done, we gotta hit, we gotta hit it and quit it. All right. This um, movement um, came to a head when we all know with the Metro PC store, right? But it started with the Amplified North Amendment Act, and we need to go back to where that happened. So they beat them legislatively, and then they come back with a corporate route. And this young man and all those people that's working with him, and there's a sister, DJ Domo, that works with him, so it's not just dudes up there that's involved with this, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately. Uh, but he is trying to digitize his entire catalog. All of his CD collections, tens of thousands of CDs, are on uh, are CDs. And everyone don't have CDs. And even though that we've got international media, go go, the genre, the music is internationally uh, known right now. No one can buy the music because it hasn't been digitized. So he has started a GoFundMe to do that, to do that work. But unfortunately, that part has been left out of the conversation. So I would urge everyone in this room to please go to We Have Real Facebook page right now and share his GoFundMe to make that music available around the world. And so he makes make sure that he stays here and the culture is moving forward. Because we got to make sure we're doing the right thing. And we can't depend on, you haven't seen that GoFundMe mentioned in any of these media outlets, these corporate media, because they're not invested in our success. We have to do this work ourselves. So with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Ron Moe, please. Do. Please, I want to see some people stand at these microphones, because we want to hear. First and foremost, I would like to thank everybody who came out. I'm um, sorry for being late, but we're having some business at the location that we're trying to buy on MLK Avenue so we don't get pushed out and got in the midst of the interview and some other things. But one of the things I want to do is go back and tell a little history uh, about when the attack on Chocolate DC happened. Uh, it actually happened when the movie came out called Good To Go. So it was a movie that came out that vilified Washingtonians and vilified our culture. And it set the precedence for a lot of things that would happen. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, this, Producer came to Washington, D.C. He said that he wanted to tell the story about D.C.'s music and culture. And the main thing he highlighted in the movie was a black woman being raped on H Street. And it kind of like put a negative stigma on our music and our culture that we're still trying to erase to this day. Another thing you fast forward what happened was when the control board came to D.C., they took music and they took uh, trades out of D.C. public schools. So we know if you're a native Washingtonian, you've been here at least 40 years, there was a time in D.C. that all they are. We had professional people in D.C. Trades, we had everything going on in Washington, D.C. People came here, they went to school, either you went to college or you got a job in a trade. Whether it was cosmetology, carpentry, graphic arts, whatever it was, our young people left school with a way to employment. And we brought property, we brought houses, and we were like a, a, a staple in our community. So I remember when we shut down 14th Street, when the control board took over. It was all young people. I was with Albany Furcon, with C5 Little Smoke, the brothers where I started. And we shut down 14th Street, but it wasn't enough pushback. And the control board, they, they set up something that changed DC forever. So you fast forward to today, where like I was in front of uh, Iron City Smokehouse, and I was passing out flyers for the event. And you got people that think they can just walk up to me and call me a student, B-I-T-C-H, because I'm passing out a flyer. There was a time where if you didn't look like me, and you called me a B-I-T-C-H in Washington, D.C., your head would get taken off. But now you got people that walk dogs, 
on our historic universities where we already paying two million dollars for dog parks, and then you walk a dog on our university and you tell us to move to the university. So that's what we've come to in this city. But my thing is, the only way that we change this is with equity. The only way we change this is with ownership. The only way we change this is to saying, give us what you give them. Like, I'm not the type of person who want nobody to give me nothing. But the only way we can catch up with this is give people equity and give them a chance to be equal to where you are. So if you look at all the development deals and everything that go on in the city, there are always subsidies and things going into these deals. My thing is, how do we take people who've done a lot with a little bit, right, and give them a chance to be a part of the change in D.C.? See, I have no problem with my city changing. I have no problem with crime going away. I have no problem with new buildings. I just have a problem we're not a part of. I just have a problem where, in Shaw, where you had great black businesses, but they couldn't afford the 120% increase in their taxes. See, that's the thing that pushed them out. It wasn't that they didn't have private businesses. What pushed them out was they couldn't afford the 120% tax increase that our city council let happen, right? And the same thing is coming with me and Kimono is at. We're in Anacostia. In just one year, our property taxes went up 50% in one year, right? One year. I'm not talking about five years. One year. So you already know the fix is in. So we're not organizing to put policy together to address this right away, not next year, not five years from now, right away, because we always see emerging legislation when something's happened that means something to the people that town, right? So we have to make sure that there's legislation put in place to address this. We have to make sure all these young entrepreneurs, like one of the things that I love that's going on in our city right now throughout the country, there are so many young entrepreneurs Right? Like I've never seen before. But the problem is, they can't get no brick and mortar. They can't afford no brick and mortar. So if you can't afford no brick and mortar, how are you going to be the next bus boys and poets? Who's a millionaire? You, you understand know what I'm saying? How are you going to be the next Lee's flower shop? You can't sell them all on the corner. So if we're going to recreate these type of institutions and have poor black and white people a part of that, how are we going to do it without good policy? Because, like I tell white people all the time, this is a matter of time before you be just in the same boat in the city as we in. Because it's a matter of time before D.C. is like Baltimore. If you go to Baltimore, it's just as many poor black, white people as it is black people, right? And, and 2K9, and I'm going to close because I want everybody to get a chance to talk because I'm late. So I never forget this, because right here, this spot right here, I knew the lady on this spot, between friends. It was a gay black sister who was a friend of mine. They ran her out of here. I remember 2K9, when they shut down 2K9, we fought that. I remember when Don owned 1919 on 9th Street, we fought that for years. But 2K9, when it got shut down, Jim Graham said it would never be another club again. And it became a, a gay club. But one of the things that came up when it, the gay club got shut down, the guy who owned it said, you never know what gentrification is like to his home. And he was a gay white man. And normally, those are the last people who were hit. I'm just being honest, right? So it hits everybody. So everybody needs to be involved and engaged in this because it's going to hit home if we don't do something. And we have to do something right away. But to me, like I'm probably the only Republican who you love. If we're not empowering people to do for self, we're not doing nothing. And that's, that's why I met with this. Any legislation should include empowerment, right? If we're not owning nothing, we're not doing nothing. So to me, that's the part of the equation that I want, besides preserving our music, our culture, and our history. Because every day, just like, bam, we got all these policies that cut our project empowerment downtown. Like, these people don't know how project empowerment stabilizes people in our community and stop violence. All they're looking at is numbers. We just like cattle. They look at us as numbers. They don't look at reality. Banneker, black and white issue, right? About moving Banneker to Shaw. I see the same exact thing happen. My daughter was at Harvard. We had all these children from War 7 and 8 coming to Georgetown, and there was a kitchen cabinet meeting that said, hey, we don't want them over here anymore. All right? The same thing has happened with this Shaw Banneker thing. These people do not want our children from War 7 and 8, which is a third of the children that come over here, 
to come to shop. That's what it's about. That's what it was about with the music on 7th Street. It wasn't just the music. It's the type of people who stand out there on that corner when the music is playing. Let's be clear about that. Right? So we got to be clear of what, what this is all about. Don't hide it. Don't run away from it. There's some people in this town who do not like people who look like me. And that's not all of it. Because one thing I would say, when we started the whole Dope Mute DC thing, what made me proud and gave me hope was, I saw just as many white people agreeing with us and posting and signing that it might be black people. So that showed me that we all come together and do as a, one of the leaders who taught me the civil rights movement. If you do the right things for the right reasons, you get the right results. So if everybody in this room can magnify doing the right things for the right reasons, we can't stop gentrification, but we can make more of us benefit from it. And I think that's what we need to do. Right, As far as you know, and I want to just put this bug out here into everybody's ears. I need to see as, people at the microphone as, though, too. I need to see people at the microphone specifically. As, as, far, as far as um, you know, keeping ourselves, uh, keeping ourselves conscious of you know the issues at hand, and I'm listening to everybody speaking. I hear Ron talk about policy and uh, Yada Yadi. Yada, you know, um, organizing events and wanting to create the platform for us to have those conversations. I know um, Come On also speaks on, um, uh, he deals with policy and, um, you know, a lot of political things, uh, agendas as well. You know, I hear, I'm always, I, I, we, we always talk about the in-betweens a lot, right? We talk about the displacement, we talk about, you know, uh, the taxes going, you know, uh, you know, rising, you know, and, and all these other things in between. And, and I never hear, we, we never open up the conversation to the development of people. You know, because we have the development of people, we focus on, I think if that issue is focused on a little bit better, if you realize what, we, what we're facing here, we're facing a capitalistic system which creates the landslide of rich and poor. You see what I'm saying? It's not really a black and white conversation, it's really a capitalistic thing overall. So my thing is, are all of the things are affected by education. You know, if you don't have the knowledge, they separate you. There's a reason why private institutions cost 30000 or more a year versus sending you to, to a public school. You see what I'm saying? And, and that creates a landslide. And then we get older and we start having issues like, you know, the displacement of people because they don't understand how to, you know, balance maybe a, a, a checkbook the way somebody else does or they, they haven't got the proper information to, 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 um, uh, to, to live in this capitalistic system. So my thing is like all of education affects all of these things and I just wanna, you know, open up the platform and just keep this in your hearts as far as like the development of people because I believe that bleeds into every conversation that we have right now. If we focus on the development of people, you will have people in the 25 years, 35 years, you know, a lot of these situations I think will, will start to deter or will, will start to change for the better because you gotta see that, you know, uh, gentrification is a is a result of us not having enough numbers. We don't, and that's because at the development stage, we're not getting the proper information. So as we get older, you start to have more people over here that's smart, that that's of a different educational background versus this one. And then we have conversations like this, we later like, well, people are getting displaced. Well, people are, you know, well, we can't combat the the tax increase. We can't, you know, organize a form. We can't organize a mobilize because of the education that we've been presented. So, you know, I think if we get an even playing field versus, you know, people that come from uh, uh, places where you benefit from uh, uh, income, with with income, I think we even the playing field, I think that'll be something just moving forward that, you these, know, honestly. These books will contribute to uh, uh, even in the playing field. And we'll make but sure it's not just books, man, the school, that's my point, that's the school. But we, 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 we we don't have, we're point. not gonna change the school system overnight. You can read these books in two weeks, and we can start. We got to start. All of what you said is real, but we got to start here, start now, start somewhere. All right, we got some questions from the floor, but I want to make sure we make a distinction between equality and equity. Two different things. Remember that. Equality is three kids want to watch this baseball game over that fence. All three kids got one box. That's equality, the stand on. But this kid is the tallest, and that kid is the shortest. He doesn't need a box, and this kid needs three boxes. That's equity. 
And that's what we're fighting for. Questions from the floor with Sister right here. Comments or questions? Good, good uh, morning. Still morning, come on, and to all of you here. Um, the prophet James Brown. Say your name too, Sister. I will. I got this. <laughs> come on, you know we had a show on oh, we had. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, this, listen, this is my mom right here. She's such a powerhouse. I didn't even play with my mom like that. <laughs> now watch, now watch what she's about to do. Go ahead, mom. Ron, Ron, it's good to see you, brother. Any, anytime you get here, it's on time. Uh, the prophet James Brown once said, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Open up the door, and I'll get it myself. And the Reverend Dr. E. Gail Anderson Holdness, I'm a graduate of Howard Law School. I'm a graduate of Howard School of Divinity with a Doctor of Ministry. I live next door to Banneker High School. I'm the former ANC chair for 1B where we are right now. Uh, I'm the mother. Uh, I, I live in this neighborhood. My church is on the corner of V and Georgia Avenue right across from Howard University Hospital. Christ our Redeemer AME, African Methodist Episcopal Church, and we meet from 8 to 9.30 a.m. I'm standing here today because I'm very concerned about what's going on in my neighborhood. And as, as you stated, to come with solutions. But in order to get where a solution, we got to know what the problem has been, to know what we need to solve. And one of the things I've been dealing with in my, in, in my community, in this community, I live next to Banneker. I used to run on Banneker's Park. I, I walk in the neighborhood, and now I've got to look down where I'm walking, because I might step in something that is infiltrating our community as it is. I think it's a lack of disrespect that we're dealing with, and a lack, a, a lack of education. Someone said at a meeting, uh, our new gentrifiers, when you move into a neighborhood that already has a culture, you don't come in to change the culture when you went there and you saw what was there when you decided to go there and to go with an attitude of change. We need to change that. We need to educate, and I, and I put it on the board, we need some workshops like this. We already know, I was at the meeting at Howard the other, I mean, with the ANC the other day at the Housing Authority. We don't need more dialogue. We need education so that folk can understand that, which is what they did, they tried to take the kids off of Howard Banneker tennis courts. And Howard's been playing there forever. And I was the ANC commissioner, that didn't happen. They still playing there. They put a dog park over in uh, the community and a, they re renovated the kids park. They put a no smoking sign at the dog park and next to that was the kitty park. Of course that was moved. But if we begin to let folk know that Howard has been here for 150 years and it's gonna be here when you're gone, regardless of what you may say today. Our communities, we need parity in education, we need parity in housing, we need parity in employment. More people come here. I was in, my daughter and I and, and were in Russia on vacation a couple of years ago. Just on vacation because I lived in Alaska. And Sarah Palin was right, you can't see Alaska from, uh, Russia from Alaska. Because you can walk across the street. Uh, but there was, there were commercials on TV in Russia. Move to Washington, D.C. There are opportunities. Well, we're here. We're not seeing those kinds of signs. Move, you know, stay in Washington, D.C. Create more opportunities. That's what we need to do. We need to educate our, uh, our young people on how to do business. You don't have, to, everybody doesn't have to work for the local or federal government. My daddy was a businessman. Start your own business. That's where wisdom comes in. That's where knowledge comes in. Start create something that you know is needed besides drugs in your community exactly. that you didn't bring exactly. there. Exactly. Create a t-shirt place. Create a hat place. Create a DC native, because I want one of those, Ron. 
And I'm not a DC native. I've been here long enough. To, I've been here longer than where I was born in Columbia, South Carolina. Grandmother I'm grandmother then, and I have a daughter that's in, in DC. She has her own day in South Carolina. She has her own day devoted to her. But they ran me out because I was trying to help take the flag down. <laughs> I was with. We try to keep the girls off the pole. No, on the pole. Yeah, I was on the pole. But I was with. I was with the pastor of Mother Emmanuel in the, the Charleston, South Carolina, two weeks before he got killed. We were there trying to take the flag down. That's why they told me they were gonna kill my daughter. Really? And this was not that long. This was the, you know within 20 years. They were gonna kill my daughter. They threw uh, bottles through my church. My father had to get us escorts to where we went. This is recent. This is not a long time. So we've got to educate. And I don't want to take up the mic, but y'all had time too, so I don't, I don't feel no way about it. I walked over here. You understand? So I came over here to say that we need to have more forums like this. Uh, just as, uh, what's the brother's name? Uh, Nipsey? Nipsey Hustle? I didn't know nothing about Nipsey Hustle until Nipsey Hustle died. And that's really a, a, a sad commentary for us because our heroes become our heroes when they die. They need to be our heroes while they're alive, showing us how to do it. And we need to create those forums to teach our children how to go into business. I'm a lawyer as well. There are folk, there are folk like me that will come in and show them how to start their own 501c3 or start their own for-profit. Everybody doesn't have, a, they have to have a not-for-profit. Go get a business that you go claim that you're going to make some money off of and not try to get it under the table. I'm just saying. You see, Mom, I'm telling you, don't teach that in our schools. But that's so when, people, when people get older, they have no idea. I see what you say. But some I people, learned mine at the dinner table because my daddy was a business Exactly, man. exactly. But everybody don't have those opportunities. That's what I'm saying. That's why we need it, the, 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 the education aspect of it and what we're learning at the institutions actually matter. Because, you know, me being going to D.C. public schools, I can tell you now, 75% of the education that I learned, I don't use out here in the real world. You Let me tell you, that. I'm the one who started the, I, I went to the school board uh, 30 some years ago when my daughter was born to ask them to put uniforms in D.C. public schools. It's, re, it's recorded in the record. And they told me no. And the reason was that big business would lose a lot of money. And what do our children do now? We wear uniforms. It became another kind of big business because they realized they can make money off the regular day clothes and the uniforms. So it became another kind of business. So those kind of things, we could have had uniform, our children to wear uniforms. Why not create? And we got people in our community that can sew, that can produce. We, don't, we well, need so to do those kinds of things. I think the wrap up signal, all due respect, the wrap up signal. Well, well let, me, let me share this last thing and I'm done. I really am done because I got other things to do. Today. I want you to be done. We're just no, no, right now. I'm, I'm all right. I was started before we came here today. I've been started, baby. This is just a, a, a stop on the way. Here, brother, sister. We're glad you're here. But I got a, this shirt on. If you see this shirt that I'm wearing, and I don't know if you can tell what it is, but it's a broken chain. I got this shirt from the Slave Museum in Montgomery, Alabama, that they recently opened. And this is that we have to break chains. And that, that's really my word today, is that we need to break some chains. On the way over here, I stopped at Ben's Chili Bowl and saw the Informer's new newspaper that's out, the recent newspaper. And in the paper, on the right, when it talks about what we're doing here today, in that first sentence, and I know everybody ought to be educated, because Howard is having the greatest graduation today, power to the children. But it says, we need to break chains. And that's what this is all about, that's right. breaking the change. I came from segregation. I desegregated the schools at Little Girl in Columbia, South Carolina. You understand? So I didn't just start today. I'm here for the hall. Break the cycle, break the chain, stop the bullshit. That's what we're here to do. Um, qu last question for the floor. We, we want to get her in. She's been here. Uh, Let's do one last question. Uh -huh. And comment because I come from I'm, I'm Allison Harney, an artist is all known. Incredible artist. Thank you. Uh, I know these gentlemen on the stage, so, but it's an honor to be here to share with you guys to, to experience this. But I come from a different perspective, right? Um, I grew up in Northeast DC. I went to private school my whole life, and I um, was one of those people that um, 
uh, we, we from go to it, it, it's my life. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I, I went, I used to go to the restaurant, sneak and go to places I wasn't allowed to go. But I was one of those kids that wanted the, the white kids that I went to school with, I went to National Cathedral School, um, to understand where I came from, to understand what this music was about. And so I busted my butt every year, um, you know what I'm saying, to get us, I, I know everybody don't, doesn't, doesn't think that they're real, so we make jokes about this all the time, but you know, I was one of those private school kids that would, would bust their butt to get the go-go to the private schools so that the kids would understand they wouldn't be scared. Um, because that was a big thing when, we, when I was coming up, um, was that the children out of the school with the other youth, they were terrified of what was inherent, what was natural to me, you know what I'm saying, part of our culture. There is dissension, there is a, there is a break, um, even amongst our community, you know what I'm saying? I sometimes feel like an outsider because I'm coming from this side of, 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 the, of the situation, trying to fit in on this side. So my question would be, how does someone like me, who I didn't grow up in the trenches of D.C., you know what I'm saying? I wasn't fighting for nothing in D.C., but I'm still 100% a D.C. native, you know what I'm saying? 100% out down here, I'm, I'm with y'all, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here and I've been working for years and years and years trying to, I don't necessarily, I believe in inclusion, I, you know what I'm saying, but, and I believe, and I believe in community, and I believe in our community, but I know that we can't be separatists completely. So you know, it's not a question that can be answered particularly necessarily today, but how, from this perspective, do I join in and make sure that we all have the same conversation? Well, that's what we're here to do. Uh, uh, I'm going to give everyone, uh, we got the record scene, I'm going to give everyone a closing comment uh, uh, to, uh, to address that, rather than just me, and also your contact information. Um, going forward, and we'll start with um, um, T. Oh, uh, you are responding to your, and your contact information in closing, then we'll come on. Is it response to content? Yeah, respond to that, your, con your closing comment, then Mo, then uh, Yada. And, I, and then I'm, so, I'm sorry to interject, Mo. We don't have much time for comments. So, like everybody. one minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll keep it short. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's funny. I, I, I share the same experience up until about sixth grade with you. I went to school in Georgetown, but I lived in the Southwest, and I was living two different areas at the same time. So I, I completely agree with you, and I think we do need to find a way for everybody to, to, to be a part of the solution and how everybody can help each other. So I'm going to keep it there. I know solutions, solutions, solutions is what I'm always about, but being realistic about those solutions because we all have to do that as well moving forward. So my name is Tone P. You can find me on all social medias at Official Tone P. Uh, you know, I, I represent Merge and Go Over Traffic and keep, keep pushing the cars forward. I think the key to it is just finding good people who are doing good things and working with them. And one of the things that we, we try to do is figure this stuff out. One thing I've learned to do, if you work hard and you work with good people, you're going to win. Right? It's all about who you work with and staying focused because there's good, good people everywhere. Right? Black, white, everywhere. If we get with good people and we work together, we come together. If some kind of way, just like war that finds its way through cracks, we come together and work together and we get where we got to go. You know what I'm saying? So by you going to a, a private school, a Catholic school, some of the people who help some of the people on this stage don't come from our community, right? But they work behind the scenes, in front of the scenes to help us when our own people won't help us sometimes. So this work with good people who have the same mission of what you want to do and eventually some kind of way God pulls us together and then we get to where we got to go. So that, that's the answer there. And if you want to contact... Uh, Yes. If you want to contact me, you can just hit me up on Instagram, Ronald Moten. You can email me at ronaldmoten at iCloud.com. I'm not hard to find. I'm right on 1920 MLK Avenue as we try to protect, protect the last black Wall Street in Washington, D.C. and up, up the other people and make the, the transformation in D.C. was remaining diverse and make it for everybody. Thank you, Ronald. So, uh, what's up, Ace? I do know Ace as well, she is a great artist, but I want to say this, I think it's all about the connection, we do have to find out where we connect, and it's about intent, we got to come in there with like the right intent, and come in there with the right like energy, so anything, like I said, I'm about this, the, the initial steps, and I feel like before anything can happen, we have to be in the right place, and the right mindset, so I definitely think it's about education and all those things, though it's about connection, we got to find how we connect, you know what I mean, what, what the common ground is, and then how we can continue to make it mutually beneficial. Uh, I go by Yadi Yah, you all can follow me anywhere at Yadi Yah, Y A D D I Y A, or at Long Live Go Go DC, L O N G L I V E G O G O DC. That's kind of hard to spell sometimes, a lot of letters. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Tone. Keep on the rest of you all for being here, Jeff. Thank you very much. And uh, if you all see us anywhere in the city, please come up to us, speak to us. You know, we're open. People ask me, you know, can I do this, can I do that? You know, I'm, I'm, 
I'm open for everyone, you know what I mean? So I'm open, I'm open and, and here for to work with you all, for you all. So like I said, please let's let's get rid of like all the the uh, any negativity, any negative air attitude or any, you know, uh nervousness, any like, let's just let's just approach each other with sincere sincerity and compassion and really figure out how we can like I said, solutions, all of our solutions. So let's figure that out together though, togetherness. So thank you. And in closing, let me say the work that these guys are doing is what's really powerful and impactful that we need to point out is that the stigma has been, as most said earlier, is that go-go causes violence. And because we had thousands of people out here numerous of times, not one arrest, not one incident, we can finally put that to rest, okay? It's not the music that causes the violence, it's the conditions that cause the violence. We got books up here because for over 25 years in Washington, D.C., there was zero bookstores in all of East of the River. There was over 40 bookstores in the city, zero in Ward 7, zero in Ward 8, and now, 25 years later, there's only one. And we just opened it, we opened it the second one, Chinese Bunch of Community Bookstore and Bus Wars on the 27th. Now it would be two, okay? And we talked about education up here. Education not just the one you get for free in public education or the one you pay for in, in post um, um, graduate schools, but also the one you give yourself. You can educate yourself. Frederick Douglass educated himself. Malcolm X educated himself. You can do that. And this is a foundation, a starting point. Go to small bookstores, though. Leave Amazon alone. And um, uh, my name is Kimon Freeman. We act radio. This is independent radio station. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, do something. And the last thing I want you to remember is this. Is that anytime you hear them say the word affordable, you know that is a hustle. A million dollar house is affordable to somebody. Who, what do they mean? They're not talking to you. They're talking to people who make $108,000 and over. Okay? The median income in this city determines what they determine what is housing or what is affordable. We need to have it based upon your income. What do you make? You make, and 30% of that should determine the housing that you have in this city. And there's a, 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 an exhibit at the Anacostia Community Museum called A Right to the City that celebrates the best practices and things that have worked. Educate yourselves. You can do it. Papa got a brand new bag. Let's get involved. You cannot... Mind your business and expect things to get better. It's not going to happen. And my business partner is white, just for you. So you think I hate white people, because there's a rumor going around because I'm that black. <laughs> I am that black. <laughs> but black is inclusive, not exclusive. You take all the colors in the crayon box, you get black. So we all in this together. And when the lights go out, we all black. All right? <laughs> Thank y'all for praying. Give a round of applause for having me. Shout out to you, you for having me. Hold uh, I see all in the trenches. Come talk to us. Give our panelists a round of applause, please.